Okay, this is another build sequence for a, a large bottle with a through handle. Uh, so this would, this aesthetic would fit into like the oil bottle, a motor oil bottle category. It's quite large. So uh, this one accommodates four liters. So it's a similar kind of dilemma like the other handled bottles that I did. So it's very large, has a lot of weight. It has a through handle. So we have to work on the ergonomics to get that handle to work within the geometry uh, of the category. So um, oil bottles, this is like 11 and a half inches tall by I think like eight and a half inches wide. And then I think it's a good five inches deep. So there's a lot of geometry going on here. So it's the same kind of process that I did with the other bottles. The other bottles I did are kind of softer shapes. They're more in the laundry detergent category. So they have a kind of a lighter feel to it. This aesthetic is a little more dynamic. It's got bevels. It's got this kind of racy feel. And it also fits really well into the oil bottle category. So it's the same type of process. I'm going to do a lot of lofting. This has another stage of lofting to get these kind of these beveled shapes to occur. So the bevels look pretty dramatic from the front view, but they're quite subtle when we really look at them closely. But it gives us a really nice aesthetic. And it also helps by doing all this beveling, it helps to bring the geometry in nice and close here by the handle. This handle is pretty deep. It's like one and three quarters of an inch deep, but it's pretty slim from the front view. So we don't take away too much from the PVP on the front. So um, I think it, it turned out really nice. So I, I made these up. I mean, the, the aesthetics on this bottle and the other bottles are would normally be determined by a team. We'd have the marketing people together and the designers and the graphics, and, and we would make a decision about how the aesthetic is going to go. And then it's up to us as designers to interpret uh, all that language, that marketing language, and bring that into an aesthetic that is appropriate to the uh, design that we're trying to create. So I'm making this up, but this is definitely a different look than the other ones. Um, so let me just go through the sequence here. Let's get over to the, I have this all laid out. And so we can move this along. So it does take time to do each one of these stages. So I just want to briefly explain the processes and the thinking that went into doing this. Um, so it's, it is a lot of back and forth. I didn't just magically come up with all these things. A lot of trial and error. Uh, but I think at the, at the end of the day, it's worth it to go through all these stages and, and work out these details to uh, establish an aesthetic. So I had some quick little sketches about this beveled kind of angular look that I wanted to do. But I jumped right into the 3D to see what I could accomplish with all the geometry and the volumetrics that we had to do that, and of course the ergonomics. So I came to the conclusion that I created these two panels. Uh, it's just a lofted panel. I have a curve at the top, same curve at the bottom, and I lofted it while it was straight up and vertical, and I took them and I turned it on an angle. By doing this angle, it's also getting the, this top corner to push over uh, closer to itself on the other side to get my handle. So now my PDP, my um, rule surface for my label is on this unusual angle. So for labeling equipment, this could be a little challenging. Uh, I might get some pushback, but I think we could accomplish that. It's uh, kind of wrapping the label, not on a completely horizontal angle, but it's slightly tilted up. So that took a little time just to figure out how to get those panels into the right uh, position. Uh, and then what I did was in combination of thinking about those two angled panels, I did these profiles, this view right here in the middle. These are just flat line work that I looked at from the front view. Let's just take a look at that from the uh, front. So this is me outlining how big it is. So I have my, you know, my eight and some odd inches, or almost nine inches wide and I have my 11 and a half inches tall. So this outside profile, the outside line here, that represents, let's see if I can select that, that represents the outside profile of the bottle. Everything has to work in from that. All my draft angles have to come in from that. So if you see this next line right here, which is very close to that, that's very subtle. That's because this is very wide at the front. And that's going to create that curve on the side of my bottle, which gives me my draft angle. So I took this line across the top here and I feathered that almost to zero because over here, there's very little draft required because it's gonna be very narrow. That's the back of the handle. 
and I kept that consistent here, but then came back out again to this wide dimension out here because this is quite wide down here. And then it went absolutely flat at the bottom because we want a flat bottom because we're probably going to put a push up or a punt in there on the bottom. So I know that's a lot to think about. And, and it did. It took me a while to figure out how to line those up because I'm going to need these edges to create a profile. This inside surface here, this one that's much further in, that is the actual front of the bottle. That's where the handle will start. And that's where I have my um, ruled surface. And that's where my PDP uh, uh, graphic panel is going to go. So I need to set all of those up. Now these are all flat at this point. They're flat on that center uh, surface. Actually, so here, this is where I lofted them. I'm meant to be talking over here. Here they are flat. So what I'm going to do is take those and I'm going to trim that through these ruled surfaces that I have created. And that's what we see here. So you can see that front panel where the handle opening is and the label's gonna go on, that got trimmed out of this very first uh, ruled surface that I created. And the next ruled surface, I spaced it back approximately half inch, three quarters of an inch. And I paced that back and I trimmed it with the second line. The third line is going to be the center of my bottle. So I'm gonna have two sets of lofts going on here to create my bevel and to create the side of the bottle, which will incorporate my draft angle. So if you watched some of my other tutorials, you'll get a feel for what this language means, the draft angles and the lofting and uh, ruled surfaces and all those things. They all have to be, uh, kind of have to work together to create this aesthetic. At the same time, I'm working on my handle here. So the handle has another set of uh, surfaces too that are going to be lofted. So the lofting process, let me just move in. So once this is all set up, I have these set up as lines. So I'm going to loft all of this in a separate sequence. I'm not gonna loft it at the same time. So I'm going to select, let me put this in line, a little easier to see. So I have right now, I'm selecting the front surface. That's all in red. I don't want that. I have extracted the line. See, now I'm clicking on just the line. I want just that edge, I'm shifting, and I'm going to select this other line here. Those two things I am going to loft separately. So basically it's gonna create a almost a completely flat surface. That's what I want. I want this beveled kind of a feel. So if I select those two, I get this bevel. And that is gonna happen all the way. I'm doing these independently, doing them separately. I'm not gonna do them all at the same time. So there's that surface on the top. And that same thing is going to occur all the way around and on this top section also. This top section, I'm going to, when I'm finished with this whole front area, I'm going to mirror the front section to the other side. So the loft on the side of the bottle is gonna be from three sources and that will have a curve to it. It won't be as beveled. I'm reserving the beveling to this front edge as an aesthetic. So that's in effect how that all worked. The same thing with the handle. The handle is this part. I extracted this line work from the hole that I punched out from that front panel. And what we're going to do is we're gonna do the same thing up here. I'm gonna select three sources though. I had the, the one by the front. This is the one on the middle during the parting line. And this is the one on the other side. So if I select all three of these and I loft that, it'll give me this nice gentle curve that I've controlled by how far apart these uh, sources are. So now I have that surface right there. And that will happen with all of these panels. That gives me my draft angle, gives my clearance for knuckles and hands to fit. And that will happen in all of these sources all around. And I'll show you uh, how that works. It's going to undo these so I have this. So after doing that, I would have all of these sources right here, are these uh, lofted surfaces. These are all the lofted surfaces that were created all around to create that bevel, just the two sources. The handle was done with the three sources. Now I have the complete inside of the handle 
and I have this set of beveled uh, surfaces that have been lofted. Those are all constructed. Here are the surfaces that are constructed from mirroring over this whole part and using that center line. So these are the sides of the bottle. And these all line up with these surfaces over here. So if I bring all of these together, we have them here and they're all lined up. So here's my PDP, here's the bevel, and then here's this surface at the top, which can create the side of the bottle. So in effect, I'm just blocking out the main surfaces for this whole part. So we can see the assembly, everything but the radiuses have been created. And since I have a flat bottom that's all open, I didn't loft that. I just took my uh, surfaces and tied them together, took the segments and linked them together, and that made a surface. So I just take that surface and I plug that right into the bottom, which is over here. So once all of these surfaces are created, then I stitched all of that together. And yes, that does take some time. Sometimes things don't line up. It's a little off and you have to maneuver. So there is a little bit of back and forth, but I, it's definitely worth it. So once you take all those surfaces and you stitch them together, I now have a solid. So under inspector, I can type, I have a solid, which is a very happy thing. I've gone through this many times, several times with other types of designs. And sometimes the solid does not come together perfectly. So this is very clean. And I have all of these uh, segments now that are all stitched together. So it's a matter of going back in there and creating my uh, radiusing sequence. Now that can also be another challenge. So I'm gonna go through that quickly. So that's a quick synopsis on creating this by using lofting. So this is in Form Z and uh, Form Z and SolidWorks and Rhino and uh, Fusion 360 and all that. They all do uh, surface modeling, which is what this is. I do most of the time, it is surface modeling where I can create all these little panels and stitch them together to create my solid. And it works that way. I'm doing several tutorials in Shaper 3D. Shaper 3D is not a surface modeler. So it's a bit of a challenge to work on that. It's, it's direct modeling. So everything you do in Shaper is a solid. So it doesn't work with surfaces. They do make surface type structures and they call them sketches that they derive solids from. But you have to derive solids first before you can do any manipulation between the components. So it's a little different way of working. Uh, so I'm trying to do some tutorials on both so we can take a look at the comparison. Shaper 3D is an amazing program. It's really great. The creators of that have worked very hard to keep that extremely intuitive and easy to work in. And it is. And they've done an amazing job. And they keep changing and upgrading it. But they are, have no intention of making it more complicated. Uh, so programs like what I'm showing here are more challenging. You can see all the tool options that are all over the place. And every time you click on a tool option, you've got like, you know, six to 10 different options that you can work with. So there's a lot going on here. With Shaper, it's really straightforward. I really appreciate what they're trying to do. So that's why I'm spending a lot of energy trying to learn that so I can use that in the classes. Okay, so back to this surface modeling. So now I have this as a one solid. Um, so the idea here is to go through and take a look at the uh, radius things. So you can see my radiuses I have over here. Some are very subtle and some are a little more dramatic. Uh, unlike some of the other bottles I did where I have really large radiuses, very soft structures and things like that. This one, I'm gonna try to keep this a little bit more hard edged. We can only go hard edged to a certain degree because it is a blow molded bottle and hard edges are not a good idea in a blow molded bottle. Because if you hit a corner in a hard, edged blow molded bottle, it will dent and break very easily. So we have to kind of compromise. So these bevels help to give us a nice kind of a firm, stiff look without having 90 degree angles. These bevels look very chiseled, but they're actually very subtle. So I can get away with a, a, not such a large radius in between uh, all these areas. So I forget exactly what my sequence was. So let's take a look and see if I can remember some of these. So we can do these in steps and that's usually, you don't just click on the whole thing and say, you know, radius, uh, because the chances are it won't radius all the things the same. So I'm gonna take a look at these three radiuses right now and see if this is what I did, that I started to create some corners. I'll, I'll do some of this because this can 
uh, take some time. I'm going under rounding here. I'm going to do a constant round and see if I can get away with that. So let's just try something. Let's see 0.25. And let's see if I can get away with that. Okay, it doesn't like that. I'm not sure if I even did these all at the same time. Let's do 0.18. Okay, so I'm not sure what I did here. Let's see if I can figure this out. Or maybe I radiused it differently. Let's see if I can just radius this. Okay, all right, so maybe that's how I did this. Let's uh, just come over here and take a look at the final design for reference. So you can see all the radiusing going on here. So it looks like I did something a little differently. That's pretty generous. I might even go quite a bit bigger to get that corner to go. Let's see if I went that big. That looks pretty big. Huh, interesting. So let's see if I can reuse these two independently from what I did there and see if that'll work. Okay, interesting. All right, so it wouldn't let me radius it because you can see how these radiuses are not lining up. Uh, it, if I tried to do them all at the same time, which I did, it didn't quite work. So let's see if we're close here. I'm going to take a look at these three sections here. See how that looks over here. Those other two look a little bit bigger. These look a little bit bigger in that one. Not sure if I exactly need to imitate that, but I did get that to work. So that was 0.5. So I might even want to try out on 0.62. That looks almost a little too big, but not bad. So I'm looking at how the uh, points are resolving here. So we have these two points pretty close together. You have to, sometimes they have to be careful. Sometimes these points end up on top of one another and it can cause some issues down the road. So let's see if that works. Just clearing out. See there, we can see it a little better now. Sometimes the ghosting gets in the way. Okay, so this is the process. Uh, I'm not sure if I should go through all of this right now because it does take some time. A little bit of back and forth. Sometimes I'll go through radiusing certain corners, more corners over here, and then I try to radius the whole PDP area, and all of a sudden it won't do it because of something like those two points being close together or something isn't resolving correctly. So then I have to kind of go back. Um, there, I don't have any history modeling here in this program. Um, history modeling is great. It's parametric history modeling. You can go in and you can make a modification, and then the whole model updates. Uh, it's a great feature. Quite often when I do that, it changes the design and I almost wish like, nah, I think I want to go back and redo it knowing that I have the new change. It's a heck of a lot more work, but sometimes uh, when I have a change, I really like to undo everything and go back and include that change because it affects my decision-making process. It's not necessarily just mechanically changing a shape or a width or something like that. And then having the thing automatically change it, which is very good, which is parametric history modeling. Sometimes I don't like to, I like to go back and sort of redo it, which sounds crazy, but I do prefer to re rethink the design uh, with the new modification in mind. So that's just, that's just a little quirk that I have. So I'm wondering if this whole area in the front uh, has the same situation. Let's select these three and see if it'll uh, radius the same. Probably, probably won't, but let's take a look. So I'm going to do all three of those. Uh, let's just pick this sequence and see if it'll do it. Okay, so it doesn't like the idea of doing those independently like that. 
So let's see what it looks like over here. So I'm just taking a look at that front radius right below the finish and seeing about how big that is. So it looks like I have to do these uh, one at a time and then blend them in. So I might just do five. Okay, that looks approximately like what I have there. So I could probably do 0.5 in all three locations. Looks like that might be similar, but I just have to do them independently because they don't line up. So let's select those two and let's see if I can do that at 0.5 also. And it does, but it looks a little smaller. See how that radius looks a lot uh, tighter than this one. So probably what I did was, uh, I actually built this thing probably a year ago and I don't remember exactly what I did. But let's try to go uh, 5 eighths, 0.62. Okay, that looks a little bit more like what I have over here. Okay, huh, interesting. Okay, so that looks like that might work. Okay, so I think it'll take much too much time for me to go through all of these. Um, someone says, hey, do the whole thing. I want to see the rendering sequence. I can go through all that. But I think this gives you the idea. So this would happen, and I would do that on all the radiuses that go across this axis. Now, in other words, I would probably go in here to the inside of these handles before I do that. I would do these outside edges, bottom corners, get all that done on that plane, that axis. That's sort of that depth axis. And then I would go in, and I would select this whole chain of radius that, that will come all, all the way around the front and then I would radius that and you can kind of see how that logic works because I can get away with a stiff radius stiff being a very small radius here because it's not a 90 degree intersection so that's probably what I did here uh, did this sequence next did the sequence inside the handle and then this other sequence at the end of the bevel towards here and did them independently uh, to get it so we have nice generous radiuses here in the beveled area and what we get is we get this really, I think it's quite beautiful, this aesthetic, how all these facets come up into the handle. It's like the handle like runs the show of this bottle design. And that's where your hand is grabbing. So it feels like you really have a good grip on this bottle by having that really substantial handle in there. So that's just a one way of looking at this aesthetic. And this is using a multiple lofting and then doing the radiusing after uh, to accomplish this. Okay, so I hope that was beneficial. Uh, it was a fun bottle to build.